is Jerly Charmaine Martin from Bachelor of Public Administration. In this video, we will learn to create a frequency distribution table. So now, we will construct a frequency distribution table. But, first of all, we must know what is frequency distribution. Frequency distribution is an overview of all distinct values in some variable and the number of times they occur. It is also used for summarizing categorical variables. In constructing a frequency distribution table, there are 10 steps that we must follow. So we have here our set of data in the example. These are the grades of the students in their meter project in elementary statistics subject. As you can see, there are 40 students. Now, for us to construct our frequency distribution table, the first thing that we need to do is to convert this row data into array form. Here is the first step. Find the range from lowest to highest. So as you can see, the lowest data is 15 and the highest is 55. The reason why we need to arrange the given data set for us to convert it into a form. So the arrangement would be 15, 16, 18, 20, and so on and so forth. Our step 2 is get the difference between the highest and lowest value in the set of row data to determine the range. So, we have here our given row data. Our highest value is 55 and the lowest is 15. This is all from our data set given. So, the formula is highest value minus lowest value. To substitute, 55 minus 15 equals 40. Therefore, our range is 40. After computing our range, let us proceed to step 3. Step 3. Determine on the number of classes your frequency table where log n equals logarithm of the total number of students. Given here are n as the number of data, which 40. So class interval equals 1 plus 3.322 log n. We must substitute the given n as the number of students, which 40. We need to get the log 40 is equals to 1.60 or 1.6. After that, copy the result and multiply it to 3.322 and the result is 3.22 and so on. After that, copy the result, add 1. So the number of classes is 6.3220 and so on and so forth. We must convert the result into a whole number. So, the whole number of 6 is 7. Therefore, our number of classes is 7. Next is the step 4. Find the class width. So, for us to get the class width, we must follow the formula which is range divided by CI or class interval. Given here, our range is 40 and our class interval is 7. So, 40 divided by 7 equals 5.74 or 6 because we need to round off to the nearest whole number.
we have here our step 5. Construct FTT or Frequency Distribution Table. As you can see in our first column, which is the class interval. We have here our lower class limit and upper class limit. So our lower class limit is 15, 21, 27, 33, 39, 45, and 51. In order to get these numbers, we only just look the lowest value from our data set given. While our upper class limit is 20, 26, 32, 38, 44, 50, and 56. We should apply the formula here in order to get the upper class limit. So the formula is lower limit plus class width minus 1. To substitute, 15 plus 6 plus 21. 21 minus 1 plus 20. Therefore, the upper class limit is 20. Next, for us to get the lower class limit, we add the class width to the starting point, then enter the upper class limit. For the 6th and 7th step is represent score by a tally and count the cumulative frequency by each class. So here is our tally, which is based on the given set of data. To do this, we just only look for our class interval since our class interval, the lowest value is 15. In order to get our tally, we can start counting from 15 down to 20. So, let us count. 15, 18, 19, 20, and 20. So, the number that occur in our data set given is only 5. We can also do the same as we represent each score or grade by time. Next is our cumulative frequency by each class. In order to get this, we only just count the previous column which is the tally since we have here 5, 5, 6, 4, 9, 10, and 1. So again, the cumulative frequency is calculated by adding each from frequency table. Therefore, our cumulative frequency is 40. Our next column is LCP or lower class boundary. In order to get our lower class boundary, we must follow the formula or the process here. For example, 15 minus 0 0.5 equals 14.5. 21 minus 0 0.5 equals 20.5. 27 minus 0 0.5 equals 26.5, so on and so forth. So, our LCB is 14.5, and 50.5. The next column is UCB or Upper Class Boundary. As you can see, the number 20 down to 56 is coming from the result of our class interval. So in order to get our UCB, we must follow the process or the formula here. For example, 20 plus 0 0.5 equals 20.5. 20 26 plus 0 0.5 equals 26.5. 32 plus 0 0.5 equals 32.5, so on and so forth. So, our upper class boundary here is 20.5, and 56.5. So, we have here our step number 8. Determine the class mark. In order to get the class mark, we need to add the upper limit plus lower limit divided by 2. 
So, our class mark here is 17.5, 23.5, 29.5, 35.5, 41.5, 47.5, and 53.5. Next is the step number 9. Determine the less than and greater than cumulative frequency. So, let's begin with the greater than cumulative frequency. In order to get this, we must follow the formula here. Like for example, 1 plus 10 equals 11, 11 plus 9 equals 20, so on and so forth. So, our greater than cumulative frequency is 11, 20, 24, 30, 35, and 40. Next is our less than cumulative frequency. In order to get this, we have to copy the number which is 5 from our cumulative frequency from the previous third column. Therefore, our less than cumulative frequency is 5, 10, 16, 20, 29, 39, and 40. So we have here our last step, determine the relative frequency. So the formula here is F divided by N times 100. For example, 5 divided by 40 equals 0.125 times 100 equals 12.5. 5 divided by 40 equals 0.125 times 100 equals 12.5, so on and so forth. I hope that you learned a lot from this video. Thank you for watching. Bye!